Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay Moore. This is Greg Cruz. This is Dan. This Stone. is Dexter from the this Offspring. Is Nathan this East. is Sebastian Younger. This is David Lab. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Jalef. I'm Chris This is Dr. Bob Greenberg. I'm Laird Hamilton. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Gray. Hey, I'm Mark Valley. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. This is Ron Tromontano from the Virtual Competition, and we are here on the Break It Down Show. And now, the Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero, Mark Valley, and Pete A. Turner. This is fantastic. Ron is from Florida, from Boca, and uh, I used to live just a little bit south in Margate, so we're practically neighbors from another time. He's owned his karate studio for 32 years. We're for sure going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the virtual event concept that he's developed, so we're going to jump right into it. One of, the, one of the things that's great about having the Break It Down show, Ron, is that I get to meet all these incredible people doing incredible things, and especially given the problems of parkland which is basically almost halfway between you and i uh when our time my time in florida and your time in florida is you know what do we what do we do with kids to to continue to give them opportunities to do things and 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 as adults you know when we we lose that uh, ability to compete athletically you know how do we how do we continue to find other i mean look being in a gym it's drudgery you know it's like a medieval torture thing and i'm not talking about a dojo because that's a different thing how does one go from I'm in school, I'm going to go maybe get a black belt to 32 years later running a dojo? Let's talk about that. How did you get into that? My education is as a microwave engineer. All right. I used to work for the uh, phone company. And what we used to do was all uh, anything that happened live within New York City used to come through me and a, and a group I belong to within the phone company. So things like uh, presidential elections, when the Pope came there, uh, came in, I was there. When the hostages came back, I was there. You know, you're running around all over New York with this thing. We had offices in every studio, ABC, CBS, NBC, all of these places. We used to set up studio to transmitter links. We used to set up microwave and shoot to a building and then give it off to the uh, the broad. That was that started uh, basically what I started out to go ahead and do. Then once I got, I left New York, I came down here to uh, Florida. I studied, uh, well, I actually studied with my instructor, Master Don Southerton, who was the chief instructor for West Point Military Academy at that time. I met him. I wanted, you know, myself and my, my children to go ahead and do this. And, you know, time passes and you ended up with a black belt. <laughs> right. I, <laughs> Oops. When I, when, yeah, I know. It's crazy, but that's how things work. You know, time passes, and if you like what you're doing, you keep doing it. Right. And things happen. I moved down here probably in 84. We opened up this school in 86, and uh, Master Southerton was my partner at that time. A year later, I bought him out, and 32 years later, I'm sitting here talking with you. Life, that's what it is. It's just life. Yeah, I know it's life, but there's moments along there that sweeten life, right? So, so as you're sitting there doing back kicks you know, with <laughs> with Master Southern or whatever, you, what when did it when did it occur to you like there might be I might need to keep doing this or I might need to buy the master out and what's how does that well, come along? I mean, that's a big realization, man. To, to like I'm going to invest my life into karate and making money doing this. Well. I was hired out of New York to come down here and build a communications company and a communication system, set up microwave transmissions. So I used to go ahead and do that. And it, it was funny because I found myself with a lot of time on my hands. And I, I remember my boss telling me, he says, you know, I never see you working. And I told him, I says, that's a good thing, because if I'm working, you're in trouble. And so he just kind of went along with it. And I had all of this time. So I opened up the studio. It started to take off. We started signing people up. A year later, I bought them out. It's just a, a great, hey, I, Peter, I come to work with no shoes on every day. <laughs> yeah, And you make everybody else take their shoes off too, right? It's a good thing. And that's exactly right. And that's exactly right. How can, this is the absolute best job anybody could ever have because you know what if you love what you do yeah. Peter, it's not like working a day in your life You're never gonna work right no totally I, I i agree i mean this is like the podcasting thing 
uh, you know, there's challenges for sure, but, but I, I just love doing it. I love having these interactions. And so, yeah. And guess what? I'm not wearing shoes right now in my own little dojo here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, That's for it. sure. So I, I know I used to back in the olden times, uh, I used to buy, I used to fight box a little bit and ah. you know, you, you, you have certain things that are your go-to things, you know, like I, uh, I was always in better shape than the person I fought. I never got very high, you know, like where, where that mm-hmm. starts to go away. I could figure out their tells, you know, because, again, we were all kind of sloppy. And I'm like, oh, this guy's going to do this. And I would just protect, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I had a pretty hard head. And with those three things combined, my inability to hit other people and and everything else, I didn't have like a magic. You know, some of those guys just have a punch. You're just like, God, he never hits me with that. I absolutely cannot, and I've worked for years, and it's way better than it used to be. I cannot throw a lead left hook, like if I'm standing in a, a southpaw stance and I throw my left hand, and I'm ambidextrous, so I can do both hands pretty well, but I cannot hurt a fly with my lead left hook. But my body blows, especially from my right hand, are particularly uh, uh, effective. What would you say your th- – and you're a black belt many times over, but what do you think, like, this was the, the – just the skill that, like, boy, my axe kicks were terrible for 10 years and I finally figured it out. And then what's the thing that you always had an knack for? Well, I'll tell you the truth. Martial, martial arts-wise, I'm, I'm very good at copying moves. Okay, I can duplicate moves, so I'm I'm pretty good in that area. But I think my forte is more in teaching. I have the ability to go ahead and teach children very well. Okay. All right. And if you're going to be in this business, you have to know how to go ahead and teach. You have to have a vocabulary that starts out at a three-year-old and works it right up to the ninety-year-old. Right. It's it. You just have to have that. Thank God that that's basically what I would say. Uh, you know, attribute my success to. Yeah. Really. Yeah. You know, it's too bad that John's not joining us too. He's one of my co-hosts and, and he, and one of his friends that was a police officer, they started a, basically a free dojo. And, and that's one of the things that John is particularly good at is identifying where your thing is. And maybe you're the person he pulls out and you work on some particular technique and he's just really good at identifying that. And, you know, I know he, he doesn't do it as much as he used to, but, but he really, it's changed his life and how he sees things. When you get a chance to work with someone and, and advance them through something that's really tough to do. And yet, like, it's so physical, like you have to touch one another. You have to be, you know, you're sweating and you're just, it's such a, it's like eating, you know, when you break bread with someone, when you go work out in the dojo with something and you hold a bag and you feel their power and all that, it's just, it's unique, man. Right. You know something, one thing I can tell you is that uh, I've been in a lot of uh, dojos, dojangs uh, in my life, and I've trained with a lot of people. And you know something, there is no prejudice, there is no race, there is nothing that takes people away from each other. When you're in this environment, there's only one way to act, and everybody acts that way. Right. It's amazing. It's really amazing. Uh, if there are you know, moms, dads out there that are listening, best thing that you could do is to put your child into a good martial arts school. Make sure it's clean. Check out the instructors. You'll know. You'll know. Believe me, if it's a place you want, uh, if it has any value for your family. And yeah. really, the best thing that you could ever do. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I think you're right about that. We've talked a good bit about your background and and your time in New York and the communication stuff that you built this, obviously this significant dojo that you've built up and everything. And all of that stuff has sort of led you to this virtual competition uh, idea. How did you, let's talk about, about the idea, but I also want you to hit on the point of how did you come up with this idea? Like, what was the genesis of that? Because that's always fascinating to me is like, then I had this thought, you know, like the bar napkin, I drew it out. And I was like, I can do this. So let's let's talk about what it is, because it's definitely a unique idea. And then how the heck did that moment happen when you figured out that this is something you need to put your time into? That is an interesting story, because in the 90s, uh, I'd say about 96, it, I was starting a, uh, a television network called the Martial Arts Action Network. And uh, at that time, you probably had maybe about 50-something channels. Cable was just coming out. 
So what we did is I had a couple of, uh, you know, you always run into students that are really sharp people. And uh, I had a gentleman here called Tony Interdonato. He's since passed. Uh, a couple of people, Ron Valley, Tony Interdonato, some of these guys. And we first started with a uh, an internet site, which is still up, by the way. It's called T-Man, T-M-A-N.com. And, uh, th- and it's still there from 1986, I believe. Wow. At that time, we were receiving like a million hits a month on there, Peter. It was amazing. Everybody used to come in from all over the world, sign our guest book. It, it was something really to see. Yeah. And, then, you know, we decided one day that, you know what, let's let's try to do this cable thing. Let's see if we could get ourselves on. First, the thought was just on community cable. Then, you know, Tony and I had an idea. Let's go all out for this. Let's, go, let's see what we can do. And then we started to go to some of the cable shows. And I am talking, we were there when um, all of these different shows were just coming out. What were some of them that were, oh man, can't even think of any Anything that you can think of, any kind of cable show. I mean, the Golf Channel was coming out at around the same time. You had, you had so many different ones that were coming out. And we were there and we had our booth. And when you go to these things, you're looking at, I think we spent about sixty thousand dollars just yeah. going. Yeah. Okay. To have a booth made up. Time Warner came over to the booth. They were talking to us. We ended from that. We ended up here in Universal Studios. We had offices there. But I was always the type of guy. I love the martial arts. I love what it does for kids. Every martial artist, if you own a school, you're always looking for some way more money to the school, okay? Right. different things. We have activities on the weekend. We do different things. Well, I was running tournaments at that time, and I had tournaments. I mean, you know, I'd get maybe five, six, seven hundred people to one of my tournaments in Boca. And so I I really knew how to run, you know, the tournament uh, circuit. So I decided, well, here's the internet. Internet's popping up just around that time. I says, well, what happens if we could do this on the Internet? And people were saying, you're crazy. How are you going to go ahead and do this? And they were right because the technology really wasn't there at that time. But I kept playing with this and I kept coming back to it. Hmm. And then about five years ago, uh, I said, this is we're, we're going to start doing it. Technology was right. We started to put it together. Well, we me. I started to put it together and um I got some good developers and we started making this thing happen. And now, it, not only for martial arts, as we were developing, we, was, we saw that it did everything. Huh. It does dance, it does gymnastics. I don't care what kind of business model you have, you could do this on the platform. Not only that, you could also compete with any other martial arts school anywhere in the world, you can compete against them. Okay, so uh, the platform is used. What, how this basically works, and it's, it's very simple. What we do is we sell the platform for a one-time fee of $95. It's not a platform you join. It's a platform you own. So you, as an owner, now would come and you would go ahead and you would create the event, right? If it's a martial arts event, great. If it's a dance school or gymnastics school, whatever the event is, Then you create the categories of competition. So if I'm I'm going to talk martial arts because I know that the best. But let's say it's self-defense, knife defense, poly. What you do is you create those categories and you charge entry fees just like going to any other event into your competition. So your students would pay you entry fees, which go directly into your PayPal account. And you keep all of those entry fees. That belongs to you. That's how you, as an owner of the platform, make your money. How I make my money is that every person, every competitor around the world that would compete on this platform would pay an annual fee. Well, right now it's $25. All right. So it's a big money project. All right. It has the ability to do a lot of uh, really great things. You know, we have people there. There are people all over the world. You know, we we had just had the Olympics. 
Yeah. There are people all over the world that for some reason they can't get to the Olympics or they, they don't have the money to get to the Olympics or they're taking care of, uh, you know, sick relatives or whatever it is. But they know in their hearts and their minds that these records that are being set by our Olympic, Olympic athletes, they can beat every single day. Third world countries. Today, everybody has a phone. Yeah. These people can take, they, they can go ahead, and the video, send it to the platform, and we could find these people. We could see who, all right? That's one thing that the platform is capable of doing. Yeah. There's so much. I mean, we have, uh, what's unique to is that all of the videos that are sent up to the platform, they are shown in 3D theaters. Now, the 3D theaters that I have up there are really basic ones because I had to pay for it. That's yeah. why. Yeah, basic <laughs> one. But we're, we're looking at, we want Apple. We want Sony. We want Microsoft, LG. We want these people. I don't even want money from them. All I want from them is to go ahead and build me a 3D theater. When a, child, when a child's video is up on that, up on that platform, mom sends it to Facebook, Twitter, G+. It goes all over the world. Grandpa, grandparents see it. And it now, just think, parent comes up, maybe they choose the Apple theater to go ahead and watch this, this video win. Yeah. Of, right? Maybe they want something from Apple. So out comes a, a, an avatar on stage, and it talks a little bit about the Apple uh, products. And all of a sudden, you're seeing your grandchild up on the stage, and he's doing his video. It's a phenomenal thing to really watch. It's a lot of fun. If yeah. you click on any one of those videos, you'll see it. No, it, it, it's a, it is a great idea. I wanted to ask you, too, because one of the things is, is whether you're competing at the Olympic level, at the elite Olympic level, or just competing. Like One of the things that my, uh, my family and I have started doing, uh, especially I think it was one Summer Olympics ago, maybe it was two, but we would try to pick the person that was going to come in last place. And it totally mm -hmm. changed how we enjoyed the, uh, the Olympics because, look, they're all there. They're all special. They're all doing these incredible things. But now instead of worrying about just the one person, like we were all cheering for our person, you know, and yeah. then and again, try to pick like, that's my guy right there. You know, that, that lady, she's going to, you know, she's going to come and you're able to enjoy the whole thing. Of course, you enjoy the winner. But for that kid that's out there competing and it's like, yeah, I think I'm pretty fast in the in the quarter mile, 400 meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like go out and throw it up there and have something to compete against. See what, what elite looks like. Whatever whatever that thing is, uh, can you do team sports too? Like could you do could you do badminton? I mean, yes. that's an Olympic sport. We can uh, – I'm sorry. I didn't hear you on the last part, but we can do team, yes. Okay, so it, you can do badminton. I mean, and that's an Olympic sport. How do you how do you do something like badminton? Well, badminton is played. You, you're you're going to play with two players. Basically, it's the same. It would be the same way we do the fighting. You can't we, because we're on the internet. You can't have two people that are going to fight against each other because they're not in the same place. Right. So it's kind of hard to compete. But we do something what we call randori. So randori is learning how to manage three bodies at the same time. So one person would come up and he would introduce himself. He would tell you a little bit about himself. He's making himself a little four minute reality show. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm so and so. I'm this age. I go to this school. I've been training martial arts for this long. I'm going to be trying to manage these three people at the same time. And then all of a sudden they have helmets on and you see three people attack this guy mm -hmm. and he's doing it. He's taking care of it. And that's how you would have to go ahead and do uh, badminton, too. You'd have to you'd have to do things like that. This is the thing, though. So so the the thought that as long as the pace of innovation exceeds this pace of automation, you know, we're always going to have new ways to do things. So here we are. We have a whole new way of approaching a sport. And this is just one avenue. Someone else somewhere just thought, oh, I know how to do this. Um, there you go. We are going to have virtual competitions we you know this is like you you're right you're there maybe maybe it was crazy 20 years ago but it is a thing now between augmented and rick's realities you're going to throw on a headset you're going to go into some kind of a theater a, you know whether it's 3d or something else you are going to have you know like a, we had a 
a, a woman on the show. We haven't put the show up yet, but her name is Amber Case, and she is a cyborg anthropologist. And I'm saying that slow because what the fuck is that? So a right. cyborg anthrop. But we're all cyborgs, right? We all have multiple presences on different social medias. By the way, we're talking to uh, Ron Tramontano, who you can find him on LinkedIn. If you can't spell Tramontano, look up Pete A. Turner. Uh, grab me on Twitter. We'll, we'll get you linked up. But also their website is called virtualmaevents.com, virtualmaevents.com. But we're going to have these 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 things where we can compete one-on-one in any number of things. Like the football, okay, great, that'll happen. But there's going to be a whole plenitude of new ways, new, new competitions, new ways of, of doing things. And it's much more individualized. Like if, if you didn't like football growing up, what did you play? Basketball? Well, you probably didn't like basketball either. You know, then we, all of a sudden we had extreme sports and you had a different route. And there was always the martial art route. But now you really literally can do basically anything, make up your own game, and then start to compete around the planet. Because like you said, everybody's got a phone. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to shut up and let you talk now, but give me an idea of what you do see. Okay, here, here's what. Let's say you're, you're a basketball. You, you could be a basketball player anywhere in the world, and you're one of these guys that just keeps sinking that ball. You could do a video and show us. Right. I mean, yeah, you're looking for people that can play basketball, uh, if you, you want to be your football player, show us how well you could quarterback. You know, you, you, we could see it, you know, people. And it's real easy. We have two ways of judging on this website. You have the social media way, which is star votes and views. And that's really fantastic because you really get the public out there and they look at these things and and they vote. OK, that they'll let you know if you're good or you're bad. Right. And then you also have judges. You have actual judges. Judges can uh, basically. Like I own a school. All right. So in my school, I have instructors, I have teachers so I can make my teachers. I can give them a specialized code that when you go up to the software, the software is intelligent. It knows you're just not looking for star boats and views. You're looking for the best overall competitor. Mm -hmm. So that's how you could go ahead and judge. You know, it, it's just like going to an event and being in a ring uh, or a dance contest, having judges sit there and, and judge you. You could do the same thing if you wanted to do it. Let's say I wanted to compete with, say, five schools, one in China, Brazil, or all of, of these different schools. They would use their judges just like at a competition. Yeah, yeah. So that would work. You know, it's uh, it, it's pretty it's pretty neat as far as the way they can do different things. Yeah. What we do too for the school owners, we launched last year in July at U.S. Open here in Florida, which is a huge martial arts event uh, done by Mike, Mike Sawyer and his people, really big. And um, we sponsored that event. We were one of the sponsors. We were up on stage handing out, uh, I love it, to some of these kids are phenomenal, really phenomenal. Um, after that event, we got on a plane. We went down to Vegas. And we went to the MGM, and we continued the launch at the MGM. Huh. All right. We're right now, uh, we're at the point of looking for investors and people that really understand marketing. I was I was supposed to be on Shark Tank in 2014. Actually, Sony Pictures gave me a call. I didn't call them. They gave me a call. They wow. found out what we yeah. were doing. And they gave me a call and they gave me an interview. And they moved me up to level two, which was make a video and fill out a 67 page application because we're going to move you to level two. Well, I did all of that. They gave me about a week to do it. And I did all of that for some reason, I, I believe, because it was kind of late in, you know, in their year for picking. And there was like 50,000 people that already had gone through the process. Right. So it didn't end up getting called. But I did go ahead. I put it in for this year. Maybe, you know, maybe we could go back. But if I got a Mark Cuban or I got like a Kim Kardashian, that kind of person would put this over the top and it would automatically happen the next day. Yeah. So more than money. I'm looking for a face. I need I would like to put a face with this, too. There's a couple of faces I know being in this business for uh, this length of time. Uh, we're kind of hoping to pull some of these people in. 
when you bring this up to someone who could be a face, how has the reception been? Do they get it? Do you, are you you know, cuz sometimes you you're far enough ahead of the marketplace that everybody's like, "I don't what's Ron doing way over there in that field?" Is it yeah. is that even Ron or is that his brother Ken? You know, and, and then you got to go, "Oh shit, I'm way the hell out here. Let me come back a little bit." How has that dynamic been for you? Like, do you feel like the market gets you yet or are are they still kind of trying to play catch up? I think it's starting to get me, you know, even when we were doing the television network back in the 90s, it's very hard to get somebody that's well known because they're the deep pocket. Right. You know, I know, I, I know Chuck Norris. I know all of the, you know, I, there's so many people in this industry that I know, uh, not only in this industry, but, you know, in other street, Hollywood and stuff like that. But deep pockets are hard to come up with. They, yeah. they always want to see everything work and then they want to join in. Right. right? Yes. <laughs> you always run into that. That's, you know, and we're probably running into the same stuff, but I, I expect it. Yeah. I expect it. You know, I just put something out to, uh, in the 90s, Wesley Snipes was supposed to uh, come on board with us for the television network, mm -hmm. the martial arts action network. And uh, he was coming in for a tune of about a million dollars. And then the markets went down. 9-11 happened. It, we, we had there was so many different things that took place. And we ended up kind of we, he ended up going to uh, jail for tax evasion. Mm -hmm. But now he's out. So we may talk to him again. I mean, I love that guy. He, he's really a good guy. Yeah. You know, he's not a bad guy. And um, we were reading some stuff that uh, you got this new movie out there, Black Panther. And um, some, somebody was telling me that he was, he was. Uh... This episode of the Break It Down show is brought to you by Lions Rock Productions. That's us. We publish, evaluate, and develop podcasts just like this one, consult others to build their own, and create associated content and content marketing strategies. So if you're launching or expanding your social media presence, your business, or your personal brand, or if you just want to take your media presence to the next level, reach out to us on Twitter at PDA Turner. Or at John LG69. At the Break It Down Show. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Now enjoy the show. Approached for doing something like that in the 90s. And uh, I think he would have been great. I think he would have been great. You know, you never know. We, we really don't know. But all I know is this is the time we're looking for the marketing and we're looking for the, the investors. And uh, let me give you an idea. Yeah. Peter. Right now, uh, there's a little controversy as to how many schools there in are in the United States, martial arts was. And I'm only talking about this one business model. Okay. Just remember, it can be duplicated for every business model. Right now, somebody says there's like 78,000 martial arts schools within the United States. I don't know. I haven't verified that yet, so I don't want to use it. I was using... 16,125. That's how many I was using. If there are 16,125 schools, brick and mortar schools in the United States, every one of those schools would have to have at least 125 students in order to pay the customary bills. Right. If you times those two numbers, it'll give you the annual people that are training in martial arts. So it's like a little over 2 million people are training in the martial arts. Then there's something that's called the MVP, the minimal viable product. Right. If the best, it, 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 best case scenario, if every one of those 2 million people paid me the $25 annual fee, it's a $50 million annual project every year. Right. The least I can make is 1%, and that's still 500K. Yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah. That's just martial arts. That's just martial arts. Do right. Do that in and dance is even probably bigger. Gymnastics. Do that, do that in karaoke. Do that in acting, reading for scripts. Do that, do that for anything you want. Yeah, yeah. There's so many different things. So I know a guy named John Colson, and he has a thing called Psydog. And it's a virtual game where you compete. And it also sound familiar. And you compete in real time in, in basically any format, but it's more like video game avatar based kind of a situation. So like he envisions 
being like someone who plays the guitar, like they're going to watch Leonard Skinner play live because they still go out and they play. And then you can play and all of the other people on the network with you can play in the same time. And you're all competing to play just like the, like as if you're playing with the band because you are, but it's in a competition format, you know? So, wow. so whatever it's going to be, you know, whatever kind of situation, it's a similar idea where, we're going to be able to participate in these things. You know, if it's a Billy Joel concert or or it's the Conor McGregor fight that's coming up, whatever fight it's going to be, you can get out and and in some way or another join in. So I love what you guys are doing. Partic- you can participate. And the other thing, too, is we have a full utility patent on this. Mm, okay. So- that investors like to know that. I wanted to put that out there just in case that your audience, I guess, start getting phone calls. Here. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, it, it definitely. If you guys uh, have an interest in getting into something like this early on, uh, definitely uh, let me know again at Pete A Turner on Twitter, or you can grab Ron on LinkedIn. I want to turn the corner here and, and kind of bring it on home. But as you as you look to the future and you really like get even further out, like what do you see? How does this change? Is there an academic application? Is there a training application for things like surgeries? How do you, what, what's out there really far that you can kind of see, but you're not sure what it is. Cause it'd be fun to have that in 10 years, come back and go, remember when you thought that peanuts were going <laughs> to, and then like we have this crazy idea, but what are those crazy ideas, man? Well, I, t- I tell you, and there are a lot of them. I keep telling people that this can open up into so many different areas. I was looking, uh, just looking at charter schools. Charter schools basically don't really have physical ed programs. Right. Okay. They, this can be something that you can put into your charter school and you could have these people, these kids go ahead and compete. You got to remember everybody that buys the platform, if a charter school purchased the platform, It's bringing in income for that charter school because they're making all of the money from the entry fees. All right. So let's say you had a, you know, just that basketball free throw. Right. right? So you you get all of your kids to participate in that. You can do it in a hula hoop contest. You could do it in so many different things. Charity events, fundraisers, all can be done on here. So many different areas. Now, moving into the future. I really do. I know that this is the way everything's going. Everything's gone to the Internet and I don't expect competing to be any different. All right. It's definitely going to be out there. And I think I got it this far. And I know that there are so many more people that are smarter than I am that can see a useful, um, you know, how this can plug into their business. Yeah. And utilize it in different ways. And I would love to talk to them. You know, I have I I have a an ongoing thing where people can get me on calendarly i think that's how you say that mm-hmm. and uh, i take them through the platform i show them step by step oh okay. this is where you can do this this is where you could do that just so they have a really good idea and like i said again it's a 95 dollars one time fee it's almost ridiculous not to do it just in case right just in case it works right yeah 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 yeah, you're bringing up a great point. Like if you do, if, you, if there's the investment side and in trying to help make this the big machine work, but the actual practical application, if you do have a dojo, like if you're going to have, um, oh, I don't know, one of the Gracies come in and you're selling tickets, you know, locally, why wouldn't you want to also create that buzz? Or maybe the Gracies want to have that where they want to use the thing and, and take this class and, and let people come out and, and sort of compete and do the class with them but not be bound to uh downers grove you know <laughs> or, you know rick sandham's uh studio and i'm making all that stuff yeah. up there's there is a downers grove but i don't know what the dojo is there but uh, th- for a hundred bucks i mean how many things do we spend a hundred bucks on and you get a chance to do these things whether it's a pe program and think about this man ron holy cow you're right about the uh, pe thing like i'm really big on on uh, yes, STEM is important, but so is PE. So is being able to weld. All these different things. So, why not? Like, if you're a parent, you're like my kids aren't uh, getting enough exercise or not competing enough. I want to do. Why not? Like, do this. Why not homeschool and have a PE program that's on this platform? I love that. Another big thing, you know, in the, be- the beginning of our conversation, we were talking about what happened in Parkland. Yeah. You know, 
in, in today in today's lifestyle, I guess, you know, years ago, when you were uh, you were 18, you were drafted and you went in the army and you were taken out of your family's your mother's house and you were shown how to act and how things to do. And that's something that doesn't happen today. You know, today kids are living at home till they're 30, 40 years of age. Yeah. Um, that's something that uh, I think was a mistake to stop. Okay. I, I really, there's, there's, you have to have some kind of place, almost like a military school, where you're putting these kids that they are going to learn. Because if nobody's teaching them about discipline and respect and focus and control, how do you expect them to learn it? How do you expect them to know it? Why would, why, where would their confidence levels be? Right. There's something there. There's something that has to be done. And the only one that's doing it is martial arts. It really is martial arts. Yeah, you're right. There's an element. I mean, I don't want to see people have forced into uh, going to a war and all other things. Like the reasons why we got rid of the draft. But you're right. Some kind of compulsory service where you get taken from your comfortable family life and you're pushed to uh, well past your, your your limits. I was listening to uh, Jock Willenick on Jordan Harbinger's show the other day, and he's like, people ask me all the time, "How do I get up at four in the morning?" I get up. Like, that's it uh, you just do it okay <laughs> like but it's hard <laughs> like no it's not you just get up and do it yeah like you can allow that to be hard or you can and that's that's that military thing that you get like you if you want to get paid the next two months you get out of bed and you stand still in front of a guy until they say you're here and then you get to work and you get to get paid that month if you don't then you don't get paid <laughs> you still have to go outside yeah. um that's it. It's You're amazing. Right. Yeah, there, there's, there's, we do have to find ways to push ourselves because as great as the modern society is and all this individualization that we're getting and all that kind of thing, yeah, we've got to find reasons to get off the couch and get into the real world. And even if, if the real world is in your garage running in place as fast as you can on a treadmill, you know, that's uh, as part of this virtual competition, then, then that's better than you know, thinking about it or watching somebody else run around a track when you can be, uh, be doing the same thing yourself. What about, um, what about something like a home run derby, even if it's like wiffle ball style or something like that, where you, uh, you have the ability to compete. How do you, how do you foresee something like that where, where you're playing, you know, like say wiffle ball, does that have to be part of the, the three person control thing? Or could you set up a, 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 I don't know, a way to have a field that's marked off in a certain way and you and your friend do home run derby against people from all over the nation. Well, I, I tell you the truth. It's the way we would do it probably right now is, uh, every one of these videos becomes a little reality show for the person who's making it. Okay. You want them to get out in front of the camera. We're not only teaching them, you know, in the martial arts, we always say, well, we're teaching them confidence, how to walk, how to talk, well, this is also teaching that in, in you know, in media also. Uh -huh. And who knows where that can go in years to come. So, you know, you're building confidence in media. You're building confidence in person. These are the things. Make a four-minute video. Try to get yourself in front of a camera. See how you talk. Watch your gait, how you walk, how you present yourself. This is what this does. And I see these kids doing this every day. And the videos get better and better. I have parents on the sidelines. I get kids in here. That I have parents on the sideline that are crying watching them make their video because all of a sudden that light comes on. Yeah. All of yeah. a sudden they, they see it. All of a sudden, you know, you know you'll get Johnny, you know, you'll be shy the first time. And, you know, if you have the personality to go ahead and do this, uh, you know, pick up your voice. I can't hear a little mouse. Right. Walk different. <laughs> Do this, you know, and you're, you're yelling and not yelling at the same time. Right. But the kids love it. You know, the kids love it. And that's what you got to be able to do. Yeah. No, that's fantastic, man. I really I, I really love it. And, and if no one else has told you today, thank you for doing this and trying to figure out new and modern ways to be more involved. You know, if, if you express yourself through martial arts, great. Let's keep you got there competing uh, for the people that find the CrossFit competition thing. Great. Like this. Now you can make it bigger and better. All these things. If you are a homeschool parent 
and you want to get your kids uh, into some kind of physical activity, this is a great platform. Man, I, I love that you're doing this, and uh, and I definitely want you to keep in touch and, and keep talking to us about how you do it. Or let's even like you know look at how we can uh, support you guys as you do some kind of you know national event or whatever. Because it, these are the things, these little projects that that are life changing are, are going to keep coming up from Boca Raton, from you know all kinds of towns, all sorts of places. People are figuring out ways to and take this connectivity we have and make something good out of it because there's plenty of of negative things but but here we have something that that clearly is is going to get us up and get us moving and as, as a middle-aged uh too heavy guy myself you know like i my body's not going to feel better if i do less i've, I've got to work through and to keep my body moving just so i can so i can have you know maintain my quality of life as long as possible so thanks for inspiring uh, me to do that no that's true because if you you stop you it just gets worse. You know, I, I think I have, I might've sent that to you, but, uh, you know, sitting is the new smoking. Yeah. That's, I firmly believe that. And, uh, we, we all fall into that. You know, we all have these phones, we all have these, uh, computers and we're constantly sitting and, uh, I got news for you. That's worse than smoking. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've done a lot of time in combat, combat zones. And one of the things that takes a long time is just getting out to go do the administrative things that you have to do because, you know, a military area is big, you know? So, so you walk mm -hmm. from your office down the stairs cause you're in a blown up old Iraqi building. You know, it's always six flights. So yeah. like, you, you get down to the bottom, you've already been doing downstairs or upstairs for a significant amount of time. And then you got to go walk a mile and a half out to your container. And then you go out there and then like, Oh crap, I got to actually get rid of this trash. And you end up walking half a mile over to the trash can and coming back to your container. And then you move everything around in the container. Cause it's got to be reorganized. And then, you know, <laughs> and the next thing you know, you've done six hours of work haven't accomplished anything but look at the workout <laughs> like i know i know it's yeah it, uh, uh, it's so easy to never get to those things or or just not to move enough and man anything that can encourage us all to move we all we all need to move much more than we think we do and uh again thanks for that man i appreciate it not a problem not a problem they have uh, on the competition site we have a couple of different events that are taking place and one of the events is uh, school safety. Uh -huh. So if you could come on and show us in a four-minute video some of your ideas about school safety. Nice. Uh, we'll look at it, and we'll go ahead, and, and, and the public will let you know. Starboats and Views, it's fantastic. And the other one is uh, we're looking for somebody who can sing the national anthem the right way. And right now we have Whitney Houston up there. Wow. Uh, her rendition. Oh, yeah, I'm looking and at it right now, yeah. She's the girl to beat because if you could beat her, we want to know who you are. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, that is the gold standard. You can get better than that. I mean, they used to use that video, you remember these days, to close back yeah. when TV stations would shut down for the night. They would, that would, she'd be the last thing you'd see was her singing the national anthem. That's how good she sang. Amazing. Amazing. So it's, uh, you know, these things are coming on now and uh, hopefully we'll get some takers. We're, we're still. People are still finding out about it, yeah, so man, we don't they, get. Screwed. They will, and there's a lot of things to sort through too. So it's, this is uh, it's cool that we're able to help give you guys a voice because, again, I'm going to say it again: we all need to move more. We need our kids to move more because, you know, it, it's not like the old days. Like you know, we used to be that. At any point in time during the day, I was out the door outside running, throwing a ball, throwing a rock, getting tackled, something, you know, and uh, unsupervised, just kids playing things. It just doesn't happen like that anymore. It's always play dates and, and this sport or that sport. And uh, those kids get to do that. But there's a lot of people that just aren't into that. And so, again, this, we got to all keep moving. Hey, he's Ron Tramontano. And he's from Boca Raton, Florida. He is your sensei, and he wants you to get out there and, and get to get to chopping and get to work. Ron, what do you have for us in clothing? Anything else? Well, I tell you the truth. It's funny because you just mentioned something, and I just put on my Facebook uh, the uh, handball. I Somebody threw up a video of, uh, you know, the guys in New York playing handball. Yeah. You want to see what we used to do as kids? That's what we used to do. Right. And you talk about a workout? Oh, yeah, yeah. Many better than handball. Yeah, handball's fantastic workout. Both kinds. I love European handball too. I mean, that's also a fantastic 
back and forth, jumping, throwing, running, all those things Amazing. mixed into one. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Good things. All right, man. Hey, I appreciate your time and thank you for coming on the show with us. And really, it's it's a neat it's a neat opportunity to get to meet all these people on the forefront of something. And, and I appreciate you taking the time. Peter, thank you for the opportunity. I really do appreciate it. In closing, I have to say, hey, if you miss Google, if you miss Facebook, if you miss Instagram, this could possibly be the next one. Don't miss it. <laughs> there you go. Fair enough. All right, everybody. Ron Tramontano. <laughs>